Hey Taurus, welcome to your reading. I'm Empress Rose. These are general readings, so we take what works and we leave what doesn't, as with everything in life. And if I don't catch your wavelength or storyline on this reading, go check your other placements. Uh, you can Your major placements are usually considered your Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Although I never check my Venus placement, I don't really think of it as a major placement. But everybody else does, so. All right, I'm st I've got some new decks here that I'm nervous and excited to use. We're starting off with the Botanical Inspirations. Oh, fascinating. Um, false Indigo is what we got. Immersion and Intuition. So something's going on with your intuition. That's where we're going with this reading. Or Immersion. And the quote is, when you reach the end of what you should know, you will be at the beginning of what you should sense. Khalil Gibran. So... Uh, yes, I love that guy. Um, so yeah, uh, I find that interesting. Um, you know, when, when we don't know where to go, um, oh, who is it? I'm all stuttering all over my words here right now, but, um, there's a book called The Lion Tracker's Guide to Life. And this is what it reminds me of. When you lose the track of what you want, he talks about just making a good guess. And it's sort of intuition, it's sort of knowing, making a good guess, going towards something. Uh, when you lose the track, you know, you, you can be on a track and it's very exciting and you're going somewhere and then suddenly you don't see those lion's footprints anymore. Where'd they go? Well, take a look around uh, and just make, make some educated guesses about where to go. And that can be your intuition. Intuition can sometimes just be things that our processing brain hasn't caught up with, but that we notice and it's real, like some of it's a little woo-woo and some of it's a little real. Um, and it's very real, you know, um, I was just using an example of having watched a car accident and as soon as it happened, it was bang and I said, oh, the guy's running somebody to get his license. I was in like a booth at a restaurant and I couldn't move. So, and, and the people around me were like, no, he's not, he's not running. And then he did. And like, yeah. So how did I know that? How did I know he was going to run? I don't think that one's very mysterious. I think I just was like, I saw his brake lights go on the very second he hit the car. And I was like, wow. And I think part of my brain was just processing. And we can call that intuition. I think there is some woo-woo aspects to intuition, but sometimes it's just part of our brain process something faster. Part of my brain process seeing the brake lights go on instantly as soon as I saw the bang. And I was like, who does that? You know, my brain, part of my brain was moving faster than, than the words to express that were moving. So, you know, it's like, who does that? What do you, how does that happen? Like, I would be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I just did that. Holy crap, you know? So, how did I know? My Part of my brain is working faster than the rest of it was, so. That's how I knew. And sometimes that's intuition and sometimes I do think there's something a little woo-woo and interconnected and whatever about intuition. So anyway, that's what we're talking about. That's going to be coming up in your reading. All right. And then I've got this other new deck called the Golden Tarot. And sometimes I buy new decks and I think they're really spiffy when I get them and then I start working with them and there's just nothing. Or I have one that I really think is so beautiful, but I don't really get messages from it. And, and I have another that I think is so beautiful and amazing and the artist is amazing, but they used all totally different words than what I'm used to instead of, so that my brain just has to do a bunch more hurdles, the logical part, and then the intuitive parts like, come on, come on, and gets shut down. So, um, so this one I, inst I instantly, okay, I'll get going with your reading. Okay. So, um. Taurus, here's your past, your present, your inner landscape, what's at issue, your environment, your to-do list, and your possible outcome. Alrighty. In your recent past, you felt trapped. Okay. Eight of Swords, in your recent past, you felt trapped, you felt stuck, you felt like you couldn't move forward, you felt maybe there was, it was unfair, it was unjust. But the, here's like my favorite thing about this card, because this is all in your mind. This was just in your head that you were trapped and you were stuck. You can do whatever you, you can. You, we have so much more freedom than we allow ourselves and we're led to believe. We have so much more freedom. But here, I'm gonna like, okay, do you see that? It's a bow. Her, her 
tie. It's tied with a bow. It's not real. It's like a decorative bondage. It's like, and I don't know, it reminds me of like leather cuffs and stuff that you might wear just for fashion and not because like you're, um, you're really like cuffed or anything. Um, and then she's like, it's going to be role playing or, or yeah, anyway, it could be something really fun. Um, so, and then she's like, got, got, she's blindfolded here. This just isn't real. Like, um, if she could untie the blindfold, she can easily untie the bow. A bow is some, is a knot designed to be untied at a moment's notice. Like that's what a bow is. Um, and, um, at, at a whim, uh, effortlessly untied. Right. And then she's got these swords all around her they're not really all around her they're just kind of in two sections so there might have been something a little difficult uh but you weren't trapped you felt trapped it was like it was like um play trapped like like uh that we had this little castle in the playground uh near where i lived for a while and you know you could be in the in the dungeon <laughs> ah i'm in the dungeon and you're not it's just playing you're just playing so there was just um there was something that looked serious and looked like you were trapped and looked like you were stuck and you were worried about it and you were like oh my gosh i'm in this prison um hopefully you woke up and realize that you weren't but in your recent past you had yourself convinced that you were trapped and that you were you were stuck and and maybe you had the trappings of being trapped and maybe you had the the image of being trapped and it looked like you were trapped it's a, it's a pretty convincing you know uh, stagecraft here of being trapped but you're not really um, and then in your current situation here you have this pretty m big card this death card this um, this is about transitions. This is about a new life coming after after an ending. Something ending here, maybe an ending to this illu delusion. Illusion. I want to say illusion. It was like a magic trick. Maybe someone had you convinced that you couldn't do what you wanted to do. It was like some sort of magic trick that had you feeling trapped. Some sort of. Um, I want to say. What do you call that like a like a scam like a scam someone was running on you like you you're trapped you can't move anywhere you can't do that and you certainly can't do that and it was all bullshit but you know there was enough there, there were enough props they had enough props that made it it made it look realistic so but now you've got an ending you're transitioning from one maybe one major part of your life to another maybe something ended sometimes i see this death card you know retirement the death of our our careers um the death of relationships an ending of a relationship or an ending of a career or ending of something one of the the ending of your singlehoodness the ending of your childlessness something ends and something else begins right but this um this deck in particular talks about you know facing um facing the our mortality and thinking about how we want to behave and how we want to act understanding and knowing that we're not going to be here forever we're not and that's true with any with any sort of phase of your life, like when you have small children, you're like, oh my God, this is never gonna end. Yeah, I love them. I'm very glad I had them, but this is never gonna end. Um, and one way to think, one thing that people annoyingly often tell new moms is that it, it, it goes so fast. Enjoy every minute. It does go really fast, but some days last, last a thousand years and those deserve compassion. But it is like these, we have these stages of our lives that we are going to move. It is whatever stage you're in right now will end. It will end. So how are you going to take advantage of the opportunities that this particular stage has to offer? How are you going to make the most of that? How are you going to enjoy every minute um, of that? Of, of whatever stage you find yourself in right now because it will come to an end and so this is an ending of a stage um, and really thinking about you know what how, did you make the best of that stage of your life um, did you do what you wanted to do in that stage because um, I'm never going back to having toddlers again um, so did I do everything I wanted to do with my toddlers did I did I do all the little fun little things that you can only do with toddlers. Um, did I do that? Did I make the most out of it? Don't be stressed out about it, but it's a good question to play around with, right? So, but this is a major transition. You're going through a major transition in your life and you might be reflecting back on how you've, how you've taken, how, how, how this, um, 
the previous stage of your life has gone. You may be taking stock of that, thinking about what you did there. Um, and look at this. I love this. We have these angels coming in here, these blue angels coming in to, to help you move forward, to help you move on to the next next bit. There, You have a lot of help and a lot of assistance in these major transitions we go through our life. You have this, you have support. You're being supported as you as you uh, make a make a big change. Um, and then uh, in your hopes and fears, we have Wheel of Fortune, Taurus. We have um, we have like luck changing and turning and and just our fortunes turning. Oh, look, we've got a little baby here. I was just talking about babies. Um, and I don't know what this card even means in this deck. What on earth? We've got uh, let's just talk about this card because Wheel of Fortune is typically luck changing. So that's what you're hoping for. Or maybe you're afraid of. You're afraid of some bad luck coming in. You might need some luck in this situation, in this transition and, and trying to get deal with that situation. Uh, you might be hoping for some sort of luck to come in. But if you're hoping for luck to come in, that means you're also cognizant. Uh, even subconsciously of the fact that bad luck could could fuck things up um, and good luck uh, could really help you. So you are hoping for some good luck. You might be needing a little bit of luck in the situation. Um, and uh, but whoa, like we got a fire, we're lighting a fire here. We got a little baby. So a transition has happened here and I almost get like this... Um, this baby Jesus vibe from this card here, the manger, because we've got these cows right in in well the cows would have been pretty close to the house um and right in there we've got this this barn sort of i don't know what is going on here man this card's going to take a little more study than what i've done before already on it fascinating you want to come with me on that let's just do that right now let's do a little bit of wheel of fortune looking here number 10 wheel of fortune all right. If you don't want to come with me on that, you can skip to the next card. Uh, Wheel of Fortune, a traditional nativity scene. Yes, the nativity scene. A woman lies in the bed nursing a baby while the bearded father heats food over an open fire. Cow and donkey watch from a thatched fire. The wooden wheel on one wall of the room is flanked by the four evangelists, an angel, an eagle, a winged cow, and a lion. So these are these cards are collages from um, medieval and Renaissance work. So, so there is a lot of religious imagery. So it doesn't it it's not surprising that we would see a traditional nativity scene show up here. Um, what you lose on the swing, you'll gain on the roundabout. Life will always send us challenges and trials to overcome. Uh, you cannot have the good without the bad, the light without darkness. Do not dwell on misfortune. Look instead to future joys. Opportunity will arise for a fresh start or the beginning of a new path or venture. But I think what also I'm picking up with is the, the good luck of Mary and Joseph in finding, um, finding a room, right? Because it was the whole story was they couldn't find a place to have their baby. She's all in labor. They are traveling on the road due to, you know, a, a requirement government requirement they're on the road um and she's um she's they can't find a there's no hotel there's no airbnb and they finally find you know somebody lets them stay in their in their in with their animals and in their stall right so the luck of finding that uh you know there was some luck she could have been like oh my god i cannot believe this i have to be here but you know the, they had some good fortune. It was better than being on the road and someone was able to find something for them. So, you know, and it was all just very lucky to come in, to come into contact. I'm talking as if this is this is a real story because um, that's how I grew up. But I don't know. But so we're talking about the story. We're inside this story. We're inside this tale. And um, and and so, you know, it was some it was fortunate. It was good luck to be able to find at least some place to 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 do this, to go through this major transition. Oh, that's what I think is really cool about these cards next to each other is because the ending necessitates a new beginning. Right. So we had this whole ending um, coming here, this death card right here. And the Wheel of Fortune just in this deck is showing a nativity scene a new birth coming in, which is typically how the death card reads is, is a transition, something something leaves, something new comes in there might be a little kerfuffle at that shift right there but um but basically that this new thing coming in uh a new a good fortune 
Um, so that's what you're hoping for. That's in your hopes and fears column. <laughs> All right, so now we're on to what's at issue here. This nine of wands in the upright is the wounded warrior. You're still outside the city. You're still defending things. You're wounded. You probably should have been sent home. Uh, you've had a, a, an injury possibly to your mind, possibly to your psyche. Uh, um, and what's interesting is, is a head injury can often... Um, pull in your intuition here as as some part of your brains don't brain doesn't work anymore uh, intuition can become stronger it's a stronger way to protect yourself and deal with life so because we are talking about intuition uh, overall in this in this reading so nine of wands so you may this is in the upright it's a wounded warrior but you're you may be like really are refusing to go back and fight for what you believe in are um are just not wanting to right now like you're supposed to go back and, and keep going and keep moving but you might be too tired you might be really reconsidering this battle wanting to quit really thinking about quitting here quitting fighting you might be fighting tilting at windmills here with this card but uh this you, you're not really you don't really want to keep going normally it's like yeah okay i'm wounded but i'm still out here i'm still working yeah maybe i should have been discharged but i'm gonna keep going for what i believe in and this is uh, you losing faith in what you believe in losing faith in this battle and the point of this battle and the point of this war what's even why why even keep doing this why keep going just a real crisis of, of faith and what you're fighting for and oftentimes it really is good to question what are you fighting for like is this battle worth it we got to pick our battles we can't engage in every battle no one has that kind of energy or time you know we definitely don't have that kind of time here so what battles and and maybe you're looking at a battle saying you know what i don't know that this one's worth fighting anymore fighting for anymore so that could be a good thing that could be a bad thing i don't know but that's what's that issue is sort of reconsidering whether you want to keep keep going down this path keep fighting for what what you what you in the past at least thought you wanted but with this death card here i'm not sure you want that anymore you're kind of making some changes and some transition and reorganizing the rearranging the furniture of your life here so um and maybe maybe quitting a battle or thinking about quitting a battle um and then in your environment you have four of cups so there's been some sort of offer and the offer is being refused. So uh, that could be you refusing an offer or someone else refusing your offer or someone else refusing somebody else's offer and it just happens to be part of your life and, and affecting you somehow. But this card is about, um, this can be, this card can be really positive and really negative. If this offer coming in looks exactly the same as everything else and you didn't like the last time, a couple times, don't do it again. This is, this can be a card about uh, not, um, not repeating the same thing, at, you know, uh, was it Einstein? No, something like that. Um, the definition of like stupidity or something, I'm mangling horribly this uh, quote, but the definition of stupidity is um, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So this can, this can be a card about breaking out of that. Okay, I already had these three drinks. I didn't like them. I barely even touched them. So don't bring me another one. I'm not accepting any more drinks right now. I don't like the ones you brought before. So, so this could be stopping a cycle refusing to continue on with it it can also it can also be so that would be a positive thing stopping a cycle refusing to to uh bite you know especially if you just end up feeling trapped and stuck you know in a situation and the offer usually turns to shit and you just feel like you've got to keep showing up and nobody else does and um you're you keep showing up for this battle and nobody else pulls up pulls their side of the bargain or um you know that the no one else is holding up their end of the bargain it's never what it, what it's promised or this could be like uh i already did this and i don't want to do this anymore you know what's interesting here i'm getting a little bit of the shepherd we're getting a whole nativity thing here even though we've got the death card we've got this like nativity scene and then now i'm seeing the shepherd out in the field this is probably literally what this is pulled from uh and the angels coming and the shepherd's like nah no thank you no, thank you. I don't want it. But it could be this. It could be choosing a battle and choosing that this isn't the one that, that you want to participate in. And and it could be, yeah, it could be the it could be the right one. But it could be also just like, nope, I'm not going to pick. I'm picking the battles and the next battle that can, in this battle doesn't win. You're not picking that battle. 
you not taking that up. Uh, that could be the battle that you needed to pick up, but here you already did all this other stuff um, and your plate's already too full, or it could be just a repeated uh, cycle or scenario, an offer that comes in from somebody, you know, and you're just like, yeah, not this time. I'm not a sucker. I'm not going to keep fighting for this. I'm not going to keep keep engaging here because we have this nine of wands in reverse, which is considering not fighting for something. And this might be considering uh, not not in continuing to engage with something that has so far been unsatisfactory. So that's going on in your environment. Uh, your to do list is this four of wands. Four of Wands, you're, I seriously doubt anyone who's watching you, that, that you're being called to get married right now. Uh, this could be engagement, but normally I see this as a leveling up, a very public leveling up of like, I'm going to the next level. Um, and so here we have this major transition that you're going through, and this could be celebrating this change, celebrating this transition, celebrating your retirement, celebrating your new job, celebrating your degree, celebrating, you know, you've made this big transition and maybe this is saying, hey, let other people celebrate that for you, with you, you know, let it, make that public, make this whatever growth you've experienced, whatever you've done here, make it public, uh, let everybody join in, in, in your, in, in your transition in this next, next, you know, this death card is about an ending. Let other people, and that necessitates a new beginning, let other people join in in that new beginning. Let other people participate in that new beginning. If you're ending something, if you're quitting a battle, uh, if you're quitting something, uh, maybe celebrate that. So bring in some celebration here uh, about leveling up because I already see some sort of leveling up or major transition going on in these cards. So I think this Four of Wands is talking about celebrating uh, that 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 leveling up celebrating that transition and that change that major change that you've gone through in your life let people celebrate that for you um really don't don't deny yourself that um allowing people to celebrate you and celebrate your your accomplishments that's um it's not a good idea and it's a it's very loving to yourself i mean don't don't have a big party if you're an introvert but do like let your friends know that something big happened for you and and something's something's come in here so this four of wands is about celebrating uh a leveling up about making a commitment to the next level so that could be also what you're doing here is making a commitment to the next part of your journey the next you know you're leaving something behind and committing to the new life committing to to the new thing coming in either a new relationship as one is ended or a new uh, a new job or something like that or just just you know if you've ended a job you are now jobless and you can celebrate that too, uh, especially if that was a, that was a big deal to to end that. So so there there's an ending in here and, and allow the celebration and commitment. So that's what you're being called to do. That's your to do list is celebrate uh, the hitting the next level. Celebrate your your leveling up here. Celebrate a commit making a commitment and celebrating that commitment to this next phase of your life because it's sitting here right underneath this death card so you have this death card and then right underneath it you have this new thing coming in that needs to be celebrated committed to and there's a, some sort of public aspect to that and where you're going is eight of cups so i think you are celebrating an ending <laughs> Here, maybe an end of life or, or maybe committing to something and then here you're going off eight of cups your intuition is calling to you here you have plenty of cups but you're moving on there's more to life than this so this is moving forward uh, there's no it's it's not like oh that didn't work out or anything like that it's just sort of like I accomplished that that's that phase okay you know my toddler is now officially a child or something like that you know and we celebrate the end of the toddlerness we celebrate the new party for the birthday this is a metaphor and then we're moving on we're just moving on because there's more it's not like oh my god that's over and now we're moving on it's just like okay that phase is done now we're moving on eight of cups moving on uh growing towards more fulfillment more happiness more joy uh moving on to the next stage of fulfillment and your your intuition is going to be pulling you forward there so definitely intuition is playing a part here possibly in letting you know that something is over something is ended uh what battles to pick i feel like you're you're not picking a battle anymore that this battle's done and you're not going to engage with it anymore and that you're committed to some sort of new new aspect of your life and you're moving on and you're moving forward to a new stage in your life 
Um, there's more to life than, than this. And that doesn't mean that this isn't good. It just means that it's time for you to find the next level and the next stage. Eight of Cups is all about uh, seeking out those ten, those, those other two cups. There's more. You have more to do here. So, all right, uh, Taurus, I hope that that was helpful for you. Thank you so much for your likes, comments, and subscribes. And I hope you have a wonderful day. And I hope you like these new cards and sort of the different readings that they're bringing in because each card, each deck has different artwork and different interpretations. And, um, and so there's these core interpretations. And then an artist brings, like with this Wheel of Fortune, an artist brings in, in something, something new uh, for me to interact with and figure out what's going on with. So um, anyway, hope you have a great week, Taurus.